How would you feel if I told you most people, including you watching this video, are probably not doing your file and directory Brewfort sync right? And that's not because you don't have the right word list, but it's because you're not utilizing those word lists properly and you're not contextualizing your brute forces. Well, today I want to show you exactly how to do that. How do you use all these current word lists and you build up on it on your own and leverage them to do a better and more accurate word listing. But before we jump into this video, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. If you want to support the channels, I've actually opened up memberships where you can become a subscriber, you can donate to the channel, and in return, you get exclusive content, emotes, and also it helps me create more content and overall supports this YouTube channel so we can keep it going. All right, enough about that. Let's talk about brute forcing. If you're not familiar with brute forcing means, the whole idea and the concept is you have a list of words and a list of files and potential folders, and you're hoping to find those on your target. Some of these could be dev files, it could be backups, it could be API endpoints, it could be API swaggers or the specification for the API, and all these different things. The reason why we look for those is in hopes of finding an endpoint or something that leads us to an endpoint that could be vulnerable for a SQL injection, SSRF, idle or whatever that is. So the whole concept is we want to find hidden or forgotten files and folders. Well, you can do this in a number of different ways. The how you do it doesn't matter. And by how you do it, I mean the tools that you use doesn't really matter. It's all I think is personal preference. You can use Burp Suite. I don't recommend it because Burp takes a lot of resources on your computer and you also want to do this in the cloud so your IP doesn't get banned. But you can also use Forex Buster, there's Go Buster, there's Directory Search or DIR Search. Uh, there's FFUF, all these different tools. Honestly, it all comes down to your personal preference. I personally use FFUF and DIR search. Those are the two tools that I really like. But honestly, that's up to you what you want to use. Do me a favor, comment down below. Tell me what you use and why you use it. And maybe I will cover it in one of the upcoming videos. Okay, so the tooling doesn't really matter. We just talked about we can use whatever tool we want. The whole concept is finding endpoints. The biggest thing that I see people do is they use the same word list for every single target. And unfortunately, that's not how it works. The example of it is you can't hope for finding .NET files that end in ASPX on a Linux server that's running PHP or another server that's running JSP. It doesn't work. I'm not saying that you can't have JSP on a Windows machine, but I'm just saying if an application is mostly serving you .ASPX files, then doing a brute force with .PHP files is kind of useless and it's just taking up your time and resources for no reason. So the thing you want to do is you want to find word lists specific by technology stack and what they do. And stick around at the end, I'll tell you how I do all this. But for now, I want to cover what are the things that you should have before you get into directory brute forcing. Well, there are two main resources I highly recommend for word listing that you can download them for free. The first one is the asset notes word list, which you can see on the screen right here. They have a ton of them. They have API routes. You have some for uh, domains and subdomains that we have covered in the past. We can also look at they have HTML, dot files, they have JSP. And you can also look for ASPX, for example. And you can see they have tons of different ones based on the technology stack. So the number one thing is you want to identify what is this web server running? Is it a Linux-based web server? Is it Windows? With Windows, you have more leniency. There could be PHP on there. Some people will run PHP or other programming languages on Windows, but honestly, knowing the system behind it could kind of weave out the ones that you don't need. And if I were you, what I would do is I would download all these different ASP, JSP, HTML, all these different extensions, organize them in my computer, and then depending on what that server is, I will run these. But I also understand that sometimes you may not be in luck and you may not be able to identify what programming language or stack they're using. And that's where a all.txt comes in. And all.txt is a combination of common words for each programming languages. So it could be test.php, test.asp, test.jsp, index, and so on. You have a list of all of these and you want to make sure one of them hits in hopes that you can actually find the programming language that's being used and then direct your directory brute forcing to that specific language and extension. The other option you have for this is using uh, Cyclist by Dan. Uh, this is also another great resource. Honestly, I would say you can combine the two, but this one goes beyond just web. It has also DNS stuff. But for us, we're gonna go to discovery. We can go to web content. And also they have different things. You can see they have Apache, they have common backdoors, HTTP, JavaScript, 
all that stuff. Some of these are outdated. You can see it's five years ago. It hasn't been updated, but honestly, it doesn't hurt to spend a day and combine all the .php files from this one and the one from asset node, combine them into one and having a master web list. So I mentioned that you need to contextualize your brute forcing and it doesn't just mean having the right word list, having the right extension for that company or that for that asset. It also means understanding where and what to brute force. So example, if a subdomain has the keyword API in it, chances are they're using that subdomain or that asset for API purposes. You're not going to want to look for .jsp and .net files, for example. So you want to shift and focus your entire directory brute forcing on finding API routes using some of the files and word list that I showed you in the earlier in the video. But it goes also beyond that. It doesn't always have to be site.com slash API. That slash, the folder that you're directory brute forcing could also be easily guessable based on the domain that we have. So let's just look at it on the screen and maybe it will make more sense. So for example, imagine we have this subdomain right here. It is called one app API hack with Nahamsek. Well, the first thing is I wanted to do is I see the word API in there. It's behind an API zone or subdomain. So the indication of it is more than likely this is some sort of an API that I want to brute force for. The next thing I want to do is I want to find the API route. Could it be API? Could it be V1, V2? Could it be API V1 or V2 and so on? There's one more step we're going to look at at the end, but I'm going to use Fluff for this example. And you can see I'm using all that TXT. My file for all that TXT has most of my common words that I look for, they're not specific to a extension, but it has a lot of different files that I usually look for right off the bat. I'm matching for these different responses. I'm looking to see if it's 302, 400, 405, 401, all these different ones to come back. And the URL is right here. And we're going to see if this works. You know, a bunch is going by. Index.html was found. I've index.html there a couple of times. Let's come back. It says nothing was found, no API routes, nothing of important to us. It doesn't hurt. Maybe API comes back, but it doesn't match any of those response codes that I put in earlier. So I'm going to put API in there really quickly. Again, it's going to brute force. Nothing's going to come back. That's okay. What we're going to do is we're going to take a look at our URL. And this is where contextualizing and understanding your asset becomes very important. What right here you see is, is one dash app dot API dot hack with Nahamsek. This within itself can be broken up into two different things for us to brute force. One could be that we can look for the word app because that's what's in the subdomain. It could be just an app and we're going to fuzz for it. We're going to give it a couple of minutes. Nothing comes up. We can cancel this as soon as there's nothing there because I know what my word list has in the beginning. And then there's the other option of using the word one. Again, one could be keyword one could be anything. It could be a random few letters that means something to the company. But us as the hackers, the people that are hacking on this company, we don't know what that means. So that one dash app could be a number of different things. But what I'm trying to say is all these different words within the subdomain, like the subdomain name one app, one dash app, one without the dash app combined together, a combination of one or more of these different words could be a lead for us to subdomain brute force, or I'm sorry, file brute force and folder brute force in hopes of finding an asset or an endpoint that was left behind. So for this example, I'm going to start with one. Nothing comes back. I'm going to give it a few minutes. We're going to exit out of that. We're going to do one app and see if anything comes back. And right off the bat right here, you can see that API, API v1, both came as 301, which is redirecting to somewhere else. And then you also see that we have API v1 swagger.yaml, which is probably the specification for that API that came back and said, hey, this exists. And that could give us all the different routes within that API and potentially one of those API routes could dump a list of users. It could be vulnerable, whatever that is. That's pretty much how you should approach all your targets when it comes down to brute forcing for files and directories. Early in the video, I said that I was gonna tell you how I approach my directory and file brute forcing. Well, the first thing is when I find my target, I threw all that TXT at it. I look and see what comes back. If nothing absolutely comes back, then I look at the subdomain name and I start playing with different keywords on that subdomain in hopes that it could be my first lead into finding a folder that exists. And then once I have done my all that TXT, that's where I get my leads in hopes that it gives me, hey, there is a PHP, there's an API route, whatever that is that exists right there. So for example, if it says, hey, test.php.exists, then I'm going to go and do an extended directory brute forcing by just using .php files. And then of course, just scaling it from there. 
So a lot of it comes from two things. One is my historic knowledge, the things that I have collected. Obviously, you can do the same. You can go to use Cyclist's Raft word list, clean it up, and use it as your basis for when you want to do your alt.txt. And then you can uh, create that and add on to it more and more as you find more interesting targets and you need more JavaScript files and that kind of stuff. And then, of course, the second one is you want to have a good word list. I highly recommend going to Cyclist and going to Asset Notes. Uh, word list, combining the two, making a good word list for yourself for each extension and having them named properly and just querying them as you go. None of the stuff that I talked about throughout this video is a secret. It's obviously a lot of top hackers are doing these things, including myself. I do the same things, but a lot of people that I've seen online where they post or they talk about brute forcing, they're using the same word list as other people and they're not looking at the asset itself. So if you're watching this, what I want you to do is please keep that in mind. The subdomain name is a huge bit of information that you can leverage. Please, please make sure you are understanding the context of where you want to brute force. You want to make sure you're using the right files in the right extension. And obviously you want to create your word list on your own based on all these different files that you find, leaks that you see, maybe a directory listing comes up and you can see a list of files, add it to your word list and maintain your own. Okay, that's it about brute forcing. Do me a favor, leave me a comment. Let me know if you want me to dedicate an entire video on how to create your own word list, how to organize them, how I do mine. Maybe I'll make that into a video. Let me know down below if you find that helpful. And again, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, hit that like button, and let me know what you think of this video and what you want to see next. Okay, that's it. See you in the next video.